What's going on everybody, Tyrell here. If you like crypto, on this channel I bring fundamentals and technicals to curate valuable information to help you on your journey. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps the channel out. So let's get right into it. Looking at the total crypto market cap, let's take this ad off real quick on TradingView. Uh, we're currently sitting at $1.9 trillion for the total crypto market cap, steadily rising, and we nearly hit $2 trillion. The high was $1.99 trillion, so we're almost there. A little bit more capital inflow, and we'll see the entire crypto market get above this mark of $2 trillion. Looking at Bitcoin, still steadily rising, but we're having some issues at $60,000. That looks to be a formidable resistance level as price continues to rise and really compress in this area so we'll see what the market does it could be in an accumulation zone but as long as it's above this trend line it's still bullish so we'll see how this plays out next looking at ethereum this one has created all new all-time highs above two thousand dollars currently sitting at 2094 nearly 2100 dollars and let's drill in a little bit deeper fix that so just uh building some support and some resistance right here as there's been a lot of developments surrounding ethereum next we got cardano uh let's drill in this was on coinbase so this one had this huge rally from 1.19 all the way up to a high of a dollar and 32 cents so my cardano bag is doing fairly well i'm still staking uh earning rewards on this as i'm securing the network and being a participant in the crypto economy essentially so we'll see how this thing does next we'll go into grt this one looks to be dumping a little bit as it goes down towards this support level of a dollar 70. and what i see here is it could be in an accumulation zone while at the same time potentially being a head and shoulders pattern so let's draw this on real quick uh, bear with me so this is actually kind of a bearish pattern as this could be a signaling of a, a trend reversal. So we'll see what this thing does. Uh, if it breaks below, I would say like $1.65 and this thing could go a little bit lower. Uh, but if the support holds and this thing could just make another wave back up, but we'll see. Uh, time will tell and we'll just like let price do its thing let the market decide what's going to happen um and just go from there next we got tezos this one has actually had a spectacular rise in the past couple of days uh, i drew this like resistance zone right here so you can see that with the rectangle and it just blew right past that right so let me go ahead and delete this trend line so this could be a new channel uh so what i'm going to do is press Control click and then it's draw this new trend line all the way up here and we can see that this would be another channel here so as i've like in my experience have seen with channels price tends to oscillate between the two parallel channels and that's something that happened before where let me take this i'll do the exact same thing and you can see that's what price did like it had this low oscillated now it's sort of like the same thing going here so let me just delete this because it's not necessary anymore but tezo seems to be experiencing a lot of demand that is causing the price to rise and this is doing really well for my portfolio really well for my portfolio and on coinbase i'm able to earn baking or uh, rewards, reward interest into my portfolio. So I'm just getting compound interest. So as I've stated many times before, this is almost like compound interest squared where I'm earning more Tezos while price is appreciating over time. So exciting thing for Tezos, as I've mentioned before, 
they're in a partnership with uh, France to create a Euro stable coin uh, akin to USDC. So we'll see how this thing plays out over time. And then Algorand, this thing has broken above this descending trend line and it's almost like a like a pennant formation where let's just take this low and go up to here usually when something breaks out of a pennant formation we can expect another leg up to here which is the same as this distance so potentially going all the way up to two dollars and eight cents let's just draw that on here Right there and then for good measure I'll just do three dollars as a nice round number once again this is not financial advice nor investment advice this is just my opinion and from my experience and you know maybe this thing goes all the way up here but who knows since this is all time right just the passage of time who knows what this thing is gonna do over time as many are predicting, we're in a bull market, so we're all technically expecting a rise in all of cryptocurrency. So we'll see. Next we got Adam. This one has actually had the same type of pattern that I just mentioned with Algorand, but this one's a little bit different. I'm just gonna take this low to this high, and then I'm gonna do the same thing. And control click, put this here where the break was, and we're looking at $40 as a price target for this one. And just like with Algorand and Tezos, I'm earning staking rewards by holding this cryptocurrency on the Coinbase platform where it's just gonna be reinvested into my account and then I'm gonna be earning more interest where that price is appreciating over time. Next, I'm actually going to bring that up we have link and this one has done pretty well i actually have some news regarding Link that has caused price to appreciate over time and we're currently resting right below resistance at 35 dollars per link as i've like explained i would say i like round numbers so that's why i put 35 on there looks to be respecting it right now but if we get a break and closure say on the daily above 35 dollars this thing could rise much higher i don't technically have a oh i do i just have 50 dollars on here it's a nice round number as the next target for chain link all right let's get into the total crypto market cap for some other cryptos that i don't necessarily cover uh we got Binance coin up 32% and Ripple just ripping it up 90% over the past 7 days and 15.8% in the past day. Uh, there's also some great XRP news, uh, some positive news that's causing the price to appreciate. I don't personally invest in any Ripple. Uh, I wouldn't touch it while there's still an SEC lawsuit hanging over it. But for people that are holding XRP, their bags have pumped as of late. Then Polkadot up 23% over the past week. Uniswap, Litecoin up 23%, Stellar up 31%, and VeChain up 33, nearly 34%, rounding out the top 20. And some news regarding Coinbase, riding the Bitcoin surge, Coinbase active users grew by 117% in quarter one of 2021. Revenue tops 1.8 billion. So we got Brian Armstrong here, the CEO of Coinbase, is actually taking this company public on April 14th. So some great news for Coinbase, given the rise in revenue and users, this is gonna be, um, a great event for the cryptocurrency space having a cryptocurrency exchange go public on the new york stock exchange under the ticker coin so cryptocurrency exchange coinbase saw a whopping 117 percent quarter over quarter increase in monthly transacting users the firm revealed tuesday in its voluntary earnings report 
All those users helped Coinbase rake in $1.8 billion over the quarter, driving a net income of approximately $730 million to $800 million, according to a new filing that comes ahead of the company's NASDAQ listing. Sorry, I said New York Stock Exchange, but they're going to be listed on the NASDAQ. And we got some bullet points here. Active users on Coinbase jumped from 2.8 million in the fourth quarter of 2021 to 6.1 million. And I'm one of those users. And if you're watching this, I hope that you are one of those users because if you, you know, just got in, signed up, I've put my referral link in my video description. Um, you've essentially made some money. Uh, the value of your portfolio has grown over the past, what, six months to nine months? Total assets on Coinbase's platform increased from $90 billion to $223 billion, nearly 150% increase quarter over quarter. So some great things coming out of Coinbase. They just built a massive beast of a company. Next, as I was saying, there's some great news regarding Chainlink that Grayscale adds Chainlink to its digital large cap fund, replacing the place of XRP. So Grayscale Trust, essentially they set up trust for cryptocurrencies that allows regular people, investors to gain access to, or sorry, exposure to the cryptocurrency market through a stock listing, essentially. So we got Bitcoin, Ethereum, Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin, Chainlink, and you can see the fund weighting market cap weighted. So the native token of decentralized Oracle network Chainlink fills the void left in the fund after the removal of XRP, the native token of Ripple Labs, in the wake of that company being sued by the SEC. And what Chainlink is, it's an or its oracles act as a bridge between cryptocurrency, smart contracts, and off-chain data feeds. So what it does, it takes off-chain data that is not blockchain native and brings it onto decentralized platforms, smart contracts essentially, and it allows um, information to interact with cryptocurrency smart contracts essentially so some great stuff coming out of grayscale adding chain link which is why we saw the price increase from here all the way up to a resistance of 35 dollars good stuff good stuff Next, we got after breaking $100 billion total value locked, DeFi is now the equivalent of a top 40 US bank. It's a long road to the number one spot, but some ecosystem players think we'll get there eventually. And with DeFi total value locked being at $100 billion, I firmly believe that this is just going to grow over time because people are starting to realize that the banks can't compete with DeFi. There was a report by Bank of America saying they're not threatened by Bitcoin because Bitcoin is just a store of value and people just see its price appreciate. The functions of DeFi actually threaten the financial infrastructure because you're allowed to have peer-to-peer -peer lending and borrowing and there's no need for an intermediary or a bank to gauge your risk or identify you or deny you of a loan or anything as long as you fit the parameters of whatever the smart contract is when it comes to borrowing and lending you can interact with any DeFi platform as long as like you have like a either a coinbase wallet a metamask wallet or binance smart chain anything like that you're able to interact with these DeFi platforms and it's essentially all decentralized so there's no one central authority or company or entity that controls a decentralized exchange and this is just going to grow over time as more and more people become educated about this and have access to this and really all you need is a smartphone to download an application and access to the internet and then you can interact with anybody across the world so how can uh, just an American bank compete with that when it has a global reach and there's essentially no borders to be stuck behind I mean the only limitation is the internet and imagination so some great stuff we'll see um, DeFi and the total value locked onto DeFi surpass this uh, like I know this like I, I firmly believe that there's going to be more and more money 
going towards DeFi because there's so many benefits and opportunities to interacting with these smart contracts. So over time, there may, may be an added zero onto this number and total value locked onto DeFi may just be a trillion dollars. And then from there, maybe $10 trillion, $100 trillion. Interesting stuff. Next, we got XRP rising above $1 for the first time since March of 2018. So this is the positive news that has caused the price of XRP to rise. And what it was, was, uh, let's look at this. Ripple wins access to SEC discussions on defining crypto assets as securities. So what the SEC had or did was had discussions regarding cryptocurrency and cryptocurrency assets. Um, and they wanted to see, or Ripple wanted to see if they mentioned Ripple as a security. And that information is vital regarding the lawsuit that Ripple is facing from the SEC and just deciding which way that this case is gonna go. And um, until they figure this out, the entire lawsuit regarding Ripple uh, classifying or having an unregistered securities deal, or sorry, offering, I'm not gonna touch it. Um, I wanna see which way this thing goes. If it goes in Ripple's way, I could potentially see this thing just skyrocket as more capital is going to go towards Ripple. But if Ripple loses this lawsuit, then um, this thing is just going to crash and die by the wayside. In other news, we have BitMEX's Arthur Hayes surrendering in Hawaii. Uh, he was formerly the CEO of BitMEX, where this was like one of the largest exchanges where people can trade cryptocurrencies on leverage. And yeah, I mean, this sent some shockwaves through the crypto market and since bitmex is one of the biggest exchanges out there um this kind of brought a bad stain to the cryptocurrency market however he surrendered voluntarily and they came to an agreement where he wouldn't necessarily be extradited if he was found guilty um he was released on a 10 million dollar bail and he's able to travel between Singapore and the United States. So we'll see how this thing plays out over time. Uh, he has a court date in New York at some point in the future. So we'll see the results of that and how that impacts the cryptocurrency market, which I don't think will be too bad. Um, he's just one figurehead in the grand scheme of things. And um, as a result of this, there's most likely going to be rules and regulations as the rules of the cryptocurrency market and what are the do's and don'ts are, in essence, still to be written. So this is a, a quick crypto market update. Once again, this is Tyrell. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. This really helps me out and the channel. As I said before, I bring the fundamentals and technicals to give you valuable information. I'll leave uh, all the links of all the things that I talked about in the video description. All right, this is Tyrell. Peace.